Hello and welcome back to Tengu Simulations. Today we'll take an in-depth look at the angle on bow and how to calculate it. Range and speed, the data that we previously examined, were pretty easy to understand. This time around, we will need to take a closer look. Suppose you're sailing the seas and you spot a target. Obviously, you have your own course and they have theirs. Now, when one of your crewmates spots the target, or when you yourself train your scope on it, you get a bearing. Let's suppose this bearing is bearing 50. The angle that's created between the observation bearing and the target's course is the angle on the bow, and this brings us directly to the first method of determining the angle. So, if I go on the map and look for that tanker over there, which is this one, what you do to calculate the angle on the bar with the tools on the map is you grab your protractor, uh, you start from your U-boat, you put a marker down on your U-boat and draw a straight line towards, uh, towards the target uh, that lines up with the observation bearing. We said the observation bearing is 50, so here we are, bearing 50. And then, from the target, you draw another line that lines up with the target's heading. So, like this. And right now we are reading 50 degrees angle on bow. If we go to the automatic solution, automatic solution reads 52 angle on bow. That's because the target is moving. Um, right here it should be around 50 degrees angle on bow. Right here, of course, it's 53 degrees angle on bow and it keeps increasing. Unless the target is stationary, angle on bow is always changing, either because the observation bearing is changing or because the heading of the target is changing. If we take our protractor again, and if we assume for a second that the tanker is here instead of there, you would see that because the observation changes, even if I don't change the heading of the target, the angle on bow has changed. It's almost 90 degrees angle on bow, right? If the target remained at the 50 bearing, but he had a different heading, something like this for example, you can see that the angle on bow is 167. So again, every time the observation bearing or every time the heading of the target changes, the angle on bow changes with it. Method 2. Visual estimation. Now, I've said that in real life, experienced U-boat commanders would guesstimate the data they needed based on their experience. In the previous method, we interpreted angle on bow as the angle that forms between the observation bearing and the target's heading. There is, however, an alternative interpretation. Angle on bow can be interpreted as the amount, as well as the direction, the target's bow is angled relative to you. So, if, for example, you're looking straight at the target's bow, that's an angle on bow of zero. If you look directly at the target's stern, that's an angle on bow of 180. If the target is moving left to right relative to you, you're looking at his starboard side. And as such, you need to input red. If the target is moving right to left relative to you, then you're looking at his port side, and as such, you need to input green. Now, a perpendicular angle is very easy to determine, as all you're going to see is the target's side. But what about oblique angles, such as 25, 45, 85, 120 degrees? With angles such as these, you need to carefully observe the target for clues. As already explained, the best way to determine the angle on the bow is by using the orientation of the target's bow. However, there are more clues than that. The bridge is another great point of reference. If, for example, the target is not quite 90 degrees and you can see a bit of the aft part of his bridge, it means that he is sailing away from you and as such the angle on bow may be something like 98 degrees. If the forward part of his bridge is showing, he's heading towards you and as such the angle on bow may be something like 80 degrees. Ultimately, being able to reliably estimate angle on bow with your eyes is easy, but requires a bit of practice. So, get into the torpedo lesson of the academy and practice. Make an estimation and compare your number with either the automatic solution or the map plotting method. 
I actually managed to find a ridiculously good document that goes a bit more in detail in regards to Anglon Bao, so I'm going to link it to you guys. Additionally, Bistanko6 has also done a fantastic Anglon Bao video, and I suggest you check his channel out. I hope this video will prove useful to you. Tango signing out. Good hunting.